Welcome to Life as Usual, a video blog dedicated to making you a more impactful leader through the ideas of self-awareness, execution, and direction. And today I want to talk about the difference between entitlement versus gratitude. The former is what you do when you're not careful and thinking about yourself. The latter is going to make you a more impactful leader through the idea of sharing that joy through your team. Please like, subscribe, share this amongst your teams. The reason why this is frustrating for me is that whenever I stayed in the lane of entitlement, I started thinking about what about this person getting a raise? Or what about my project not going the way it should have? Or what about someone being late and I came early? So I should be able to have blah, blah, blah. Those things led me to more of a depressed state because instead of looking at things as single incidents, I looked at things as some sort of conspiracy for people to get me. When you think of things in that conspiratorial mindset, you're not really focused on the work anymore. You're focused on protection. And leaders can't afford to be protective. Leaders need to attack. What is entitlement and gratitude? Entitlement and gratitude are two sides of a spectrum. On one side you have entitlement, which is focused on me, me, me. Why don't I have a desk? Why don't I have a parking space? Why don't I get free lunch? It's all focused on you and how you're supposed to have this and that. The difference of gratitude on the other end of the spectrum is you're thinking about the other person or other people on your team. You're thinking about how Tony got the papers together or how Jace made sure that the videos were looking great. Tony and Jace are my producer and director respectively. Hi guys. Uh, <laughs> you're thinking about other people and by thinking about other people you're now focused on their welfare and as a side product you're definitely thinking about the team or the goal through their eyes which will allow you to be more impactful as a leader. Why does entitlement feel good? Entitlement feels good to people because they feel like they deserve things. Mm -hmm. And that word deserve is something that will kill any leader. The minute a leader thinks they deserve or they think from, being, from deserving things, they think they're better than the team around them, is the minute they're starting to think about themselves and the team cohesiveness is going to die. As a leader, you're not some sort of king. You shouldn't act like one. How does gratitude translate into good leadership? Gratitude translates into good leadership because with each moment you're thinking about someone else, you're being more empathetic. And when you're more empathetic, you're more open to listen. When you're more open to listen, you get more cracks at solving problems that help your team perform at the level they need to perform. This is a rough one because I've dealt with this a lot. When I was growing up, my mother used to tell me, Adam, you feel like the world owes you something. And I didn't quite get that or understand why she said that until I started going out into the world and leading teams myself. And I started to see what that did to how they reacted and how they worked. So instead of getting the best out of my people, I was getting just the bare minimum. It's one of the telltale signs, is when you start seeing people just kind of showing up when they feel like it, they might feel like you're entitled. How do you translate a feeling of entitlement into gratitude? Well, let's take a look at it through the lens of self-awareness, execution, and direction, so that you'll be able to implement it today. Self-awareness. You need to be aware that Entitlement brings you down because the more you think about yourself, the less you're thinking about others in a positive light. It's just weird relationship between self-awareness and ego and team leadership. The more you're pushing that ego for yourself, the less you're thinking about your team. And what's even worse about that is the more you're thinking that they, they might be out to get you. You get very conspiratorial if you're thinking about yourself because you think you're owed something rather than feeling like you're just a part of the team. Execution. How do you turn your 
entitlement into gratitude. One of the ways I like to do it is by having to write three things I'm grateful for at the end of every day. I have a service called If This Then That, send me an email that I have to write to at five o'clock that gives me a list of questions, one of which is, what are three things you're grateful for? I take that a step further. And if I'm grateful about something that someone did, I have a line in that email that says, stop, send them an email and say thank you. This keeps me honest about the things that I'm grateful for and has a side product. It allows me to show the people on my team that I care about them. Direction. How do you get your team to do this or how do you get to direct people to understand and communicate what you're trying to do here? I think it's quite simple. Follow through on the execution part of this. Send an email out to the people that you're grateful for and make it a regular practice. And then tell them that you're trying to show how much you care for them. So let's wrap this up. You need to be self-aware that entitlement and gratitude are on the same scale. And the more you're entitled, the less gratitude you have. And the more apt you are to focus on yourself rather than your team or the project. You need to execute by having a mechanism in place to make sure that you're sending out your gratitude to other people and thinking about it proactively throughout the day. Remember, you need to be explicit here. What did they do that made you happy? And then directionally, send it out to people. Let people know that you care because often we don't hear that nice thing at the end of the day and it'll do a lot for your team. If you found this topic of leadership interesting, take a look in the description box and you'll find a couple of books that have helped my understanding of how to become a better leader and some of the pitfalls that I've found across the way. Especially when it comes to leadership, this is not a one-way conversation. I'm not just talking to you. And this isn't just a two-way conversation. You're not just talking to me and I'm talking to you. This is actually a conversation amongst the tribe of leaders. That can't start without you injecting some opinion or idea in the comment box below. Talk about some of your own personal stories and help engage all of us into learning how to be a better leader from you. I'm not the only teacher, I'm also a student.